Sian mingele lo sugu na mshanje ke kumnande kanjalo ke. Yebo yes, yebo yes. Sizi ndo kumnande ke manga bese zinjalo ke. So ilona sugu lo loka tesele ndele ke. Ene la sizo chola kona izul kankulu nkulu. Day 4. La sizo besi kona ke. No baba upeizel tryon. My spiritual father bagiti ke. Enda pano kamu ke new covenant fellowship. Yes, ezo deliver ke izul kankulu nkulu. Na last week na muzu. Na na mshanje nzo muzu. Ya bona ke ukathi mas sithi mas semhlabeni ethi sikwi restaurant kankulunkulu mangabe sifuna ukuthi order something we just make your order silenza ngo call we order ngithi baba ngifuna range rover anginiketha ngithi baba ngifuna a six bedroom house noma three bedroom house uyabo amesana kuninikeza uNkulunkulu in inda ingoba uya i order lento uyifuna lento bese uya ithola lento and you have to say that I am telling you, you know, so you can't say that I am telling you, you can't say that I am telling you, you can't say that I am telling you, share your page, and you can't say that I am telling you, you can't say that I am telling you, and subscribe to our YouTube, so YouTube, Facebook, and also Instagram, and our Twitter score, and you can't say that I am telling you, you'll get us, you'll get me, you'll get the work, I am telling you, you will be blessed. I know you're going to be blessed. And thank you for those who are supporting this ministry through their finances and their prayers and encouragement. It is a blessing. You are a blessing. May the good Lord bless you. I know you're going to be blessed by Dr. Basil Tryon tonight. And also Buseka Kuzoba Mnande. Kuzoba Mnande. Kuzoba Mnande. Kuzoba Mnande. Kuzoba Mnande. You're going to be blessed. See you tomorrow. So we see you later. Oh, Thank you, sir. 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 Give the Lord a big hand and you can take your seats. Luke chapter 17 from verse 11 onwards and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria of Galilee and as he entered into a certain village there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto him, Arise! Go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. Thy faith had made thee whole. Thanksgiving is an ingredient of faith that helps you or empowers you to receive the order in the restaurant of God. These three powerful days I've been with you is that the entrance into the restaurant is the righteousness of God. Wake. Unkulunkulu me bona wene bon in tizio yak. 
ubon inflis yo ya jes ulungi le manje utalwengo gusha manje loke kudalwengo nyama nyama kodwa loke kudalwengo moya umoya so ya kwazi kubona emoyeni uyakwazi ukuhamba emoyeni uyakwazi ukusebenza la emhlabeni kanti usebenze ezulu wenfuthi There is no more gap between heaven and earth because Jesus is now the gap stander. No more gap. Hallelujah. No more gap between the spiritual and the natural. It's one. Umoya ungenile manje nathi singenile sisifana nje namudansa nje uyenze kanje sikhona nomoya yonke leyo nje siyenza. Hey Avenza bula kuti insamusha nina man hey 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 I wish I met you all when I was still 27 I will be dancing with you all like that man wow so beautiful ubona baba noma a dance a concert hey something so beautiful you must never never take that thing for granted it's something too beautiful to see and to to be part of in the name of Jesus the, now righteousness gives you access because righteousness is god and you are righteous now through Jesus so god owns the wealth so righteousness owns the wealth you now have changed in your mind from being a worker only to become an owner a worker thinks differently to an owner while you're working for the lord you think like a steward you think like an owner yonk into yenkosi eyami manje nami sengenkosi futhi ujesu inkosi yamakhosi hallelujah he doesn't only make us citizens He makes us kings. You are kings and priests and you will reign on the earth. What belongs to Jehovah is yours. You are joint heirs with Jesus. What belongs to Jesus belongs to you. You get kaya man. Into ya baba, into ya. You've got responsibility now. Ya kwazi pasopo izinto you so long he lemanji got access into this restaurant then last night we said now you got to make your order you're making a demand on what belongs to you and that demand you release it by a faith confession you speak it out into the universe The angels of God are the waitresses. They waiting on you. They have been sent by God to minister to the heirs of salvation. When you don't speak in line with what belongs to God, the angels got nothing to do. Their hands are tied. So your heart must be lined up to God's heart. and your words must come out of a heart that's lined up to God's heart and the angels hearken to the voice of the word not just the word but the voice that you put to the word of God and so now you place your order your order is more than what you need you're not a beggar now a beggar needs things a beggar begs but an owner and a king doesn't beg a king makes a demand on what they want hallelujah babu mhlabo umhlabo wakho manje this earth it belongs to you and all the wealth in the earth so you learn to decree you learn to declare and when you decree a thing it is so the lord says and that's how you make an order 
But you must learn to decree what you want. <laughs> what you want. In into a funayo. Ufunane. Define it clearly. Like an architect. How do you want it? How big is it that you want? It's your life, this. You only have one life to live on this earth. You'll never be given another chance to live a life in the earth. One chance only. When your life leaves your body, you got no more authority to conduct business in the earth. Your body is your authority to live in the earth. Man so shona, umo ayu pume msimben, ungaba ne male ninge pangen, au kwazgu isebenzis. Ungaba ne business, ungaba nani, ayiki nto kwazgu yens, nonkulu nkulu, ate funu mzimba, ezo sebenza kona, emslaben. Hallelujah. Manje Jesus in his resurrection, he is in heaven. But a body thou hast prepared for me, O oh God, to do your will. Now you are the body. When umzimba watches, a many membered body. So we begin to work together like a symphony in harmony. And then Jesus' life and the blessing, a commanded blessing, begins to work through the body. A corporate man, many-membered body of Jesus Christ. That is who we are. And so when we make our order this morning, we got to learn to receive the order. You must stay where you are when you make an order. Ngoba inglozi masei bui simpata yako maunga yake slalwe nyako sako. Kono monyo tati slalwe sako. You must know where you made your order. You must know where God has planted you. You must know who's your father, who's your mother. You must know Mteto Wendu, yeah, Mount Ka, Mount Zion Carnation. Kono Mteto Lagle Kai. Yabonaga, Lagoti, Nipatwega, Singem Bella. Hallelujah. Kono Excellence, la, E Excellence. Yabonaga, we are Eve Excellence. E Excellence, it glorifies God. Because our God is an excellent God. And excellence attracts people. You'll never be able to get a building big enough for Nanda. You'll have to have multiple services the whole day in your church when we build it together. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you sit down. You do the work of God. Now you've got to receive the order. And that's what I want to speak to you about. You receive with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Ubonga. Ubonga in tinkulu. Umuntonga bongi. Umuntonga sonipi. Aubozi toli into gukulunkulu. Umuntonga bongi in tiswenya. You've got to be baptized in thanksgiving and honor. Thanksgiving is something so great in your heart. complain. <laughs> you're moaning, you're complaining all the time. Shake in the Old Testament, when the people of God complained, snakes bit them. So that tells us today that in the kingdom of God, there's no place for complaining. There's no place for moaning and groaning. There's a place for the joy of the Lord. 
The joy of the Lord is our strength. Masses chabulingos. Sinamanda. Amanda chabulisingos. Ningosi chabulisa tina food. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is above circumstances, is above your feelings, is above what people say, the joy of the Lord. Because it's a joy of the Lord, but it's our strength. His joy. Nongulunguluya dance appell. Zephaniah says that. He's dancing over you. We are dancing more. Now we are dancing. We are jabula. So naman emoye. The joy of the Lord is our strength. His joy becomes our strength. Whenever Jesus wanted to do a great miracle, or he needed to do a great miracle, he always operated in thanksgiving. Always. Faith without thanksgiving won't work properly. But faith with thanksgiving works in an amazing way. Here there were these ten lepers. And in the Bible, leprosy is a type of sin. But it can be used also as a type of any problem that came out of the, of the sin of man. Poverty, sickness, disease, curses, all that. So lepers were ostracized from society. The priest examined them. And because they were lepers, they were separated from society because leprosy is contagious. And so when they had their people and they're walking together, they would shout to everybody else, unclean, unclean, unclean. And anybody who heard that word unclean, they walked far from them. So now these 10 lepers, they heard about Jesus and they cried out to God. They cried out to Jesus. They said, Jesus, thou son of David, Jesus, master. They lifted up their voices. God's not nervous with noise. That's why I like Zulu. That's why I think that Zulu in Ezulu in Bakulum is Zulu. Because you know how to rejoice. Man, chabula. Chabula ngempela. You don't quite. And more. Uh, you're not. How are you? Abalungu. Oh, man, thank you. Abayashin, thank you. Ngabu mlungu. Awonu mlungu. Uzulu. You Africa in Jesus' name. I bong ringo se. Hallelujah. <laughs> I bong in God. <laughs> I I seven eleven. No, no. Nina Nyagwazu don't see a cat in his way. We would sell him. Young into a jabless and cool cool. We keep in his way. My poem in his way. Wah! In Jesus' name. They lifted up their voices. The boys ain't got you. Lift it up. Lift up your voice when you serve the Lord, when you want a miracle from God. They say, Master, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. They caught his attention. It's wonderful, this portion of scripture. They caught his attention and he looked at them. It wasn't on his agenda looked at them and then he said go show yourself to the priest God will always ask you to do something outside your comfort zone when you in a comfort zone you cannot walk in the spirit Bible says woe uh, unto those who are at ease in Zion you're not doing nothing new you see to be someone you've never been, 
to go somewhere where you've never gone, to have something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done. You always got to stretch yourself to do what you've never done, to be what you've never been. You're going into uncharted waters. You're going into virgin territory. You're no more following a trail. You're blazing a trail. You're going where others have never been in the name of Jesus. You're going with the trailblazer, Jesus Christ. Come, let's give him a big hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go show yourself to the priest. It's a priest that Jesus didn't heal them. Healing follows the obedience. Everything God does, he will give you something to do. That is impossible. But when you step out in faith and do it, he'll do the miracle. Whether you'll walk on the water, he'll help you. Withered hand, stretch forth your hand. He'll always be telling you to do what you can't do. But you don't do it on your own. You are doing it with Jesus. Hallelujah. Trusting him. He's not asking you to do it on your own. And so... The Bible says, as they went, they got healed. Didn't get healed. Jesus didn't say, be healed. He says, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went now, then they got healed. And then the one came back. The other nine never came back. It shows me there are many, many people, they don't come back to say thank you. They're just in this thing for what they can get. Their heart is not right. And this one came back. I like how he came back. He teaches us something here. It says that one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Turned back. The others are now running to the priest to say, I'm healed now. I'm free from leprosy. Give me the certificate that I'm free to do everything in society. But the other one went back first to the one who healed them. You must learn to put first things first. You must learn never to forget where you come from. Never to forget who helped you. Never forget your father and your mother. Honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. And they turned back. This one turned back. And look what happened to him. And with a loud voice, he glorified God. He reminds me like Mount Zion carnation people. Loud voice glorifying God. With a loud voice and glorify whatever you do. Jump, fall down, do any... Ah! I don't care what a man thinks about me. I don't care whether you love or don't love. I'm here to glorify my God. Hallelujah. And not only with a loud voice, the Bible says he fell down on his face. Fell down on his face. Where? Not any place. At the feet of Jesus. He fell down at the feet of Jesus. Giving thanks to him. You see, the word thank you from the root meaning is from the word grace. Charis. Charis, which means grace, also means thank you. When you lose your attitude of gratitude, you fall from the grace of God. 
The grace of God is the divinity of God touching your heart and it affects your life. Umuso wangulungu Ujesu wa felizono za Manju Jesu wa clean and sizi wa nigin sizi wa clean Ungena no moyo nwele pagati mina Upega lende yenzegi Umoyo nwele Unkulunkulu, umoyo nwele. Ukwa zubingena, enfizwini, elungile, ngekazi ya jesu. Wenu fanelu wazi kuti, hape ngi clean enfizwini ya, mbaba mange hape ngi clean, umoyo nwele ngei kukwa zubingena enfizwini. Mbada ngei ka sangane, nende ngolele, umoyo nwele. Because he had Jesus, he had clean in his As you say, young kid in his ear, in the key record, young, who be innocent, the, 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 the scandal of the gospel. He justifies guilty people. <laughs> justifies guilty people. You're supposed to go to prison. But the magistrate says, I find no fault in you. You are innocent. Not because of what you did or what you didn't do. Always remember, it's because of what Jesus did for me. I am now innocent. The blood of Jesus has washed my sin away. Now you come into that consciousness. You're more aware of your innocence than your guilt. There is no condemnation now to those that are in Christ Jesus. You are walking with God. Now what Jesus said to this man is the key. This is what he said. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. He was coming back to say thank you. God saw that as faith. Ubonga is faith. By faith, it is by faith, it is by grace through faith. Umusa no kolwa wangulungu. If you work with grace and faith, you can go far in life. Don't be legalistic. Ukolwa no musa wangulungu. Move many things for you in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thy faith had made thee whole. So what happened here? Jesus is actually saying to this man, what i done for you, you'll be able to keep it now. There are many people get blessed by God, but they can't keep it. You see their lives go like that, go down. They come back, go like that, come back. But here with thanksgiving, faith with thanksgiving, not only do you receive, but you'll start increasing. Never to go back again. The kingdom of God is from faith to faith. From glory to glory. Never to a receding glory. Always to an increasing glory. I release an increasing glory on your life. That you're never going back. You're never going down. You're always going up and up and up and up. Give him a big hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul, the apostle, understood in the Pauline epistles about the power of thanksgiving. He said you must give thanks in all things. He also said you must give thanks for all things. Many, many Christians they lose out with the grace of God in the all things because they become an expression of the all things that they're going through. Why did Paul say, give thanks in all things? Because thanksgiving will bring the miracles of God. So when you're going through a difficult season, refuse what you are going through to determine your response. 
Because in life, it's not what happens to you that determines the outcome of your life. But how you respond to what happens to you. It's your responses that determines the outcome of your life. People will do crazy things to you. But how you respond will cause you to go up above all that. So you learn to give thanks in whatever you go through. When Jonah was in the belly of the whale, of the fish, Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, of the whale, the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He used Jonah. Jonah had a faith that was injected with thanksgiving. He thanked God and he called these things lying vanities. And God caused this whale to spew him out on dry land when he was down at the bottom of the sea where the bars were. It was like in prison and the weeds were around his neck. But right in that place, he gave thanks to God. And he said, these are lying vanities. And he spoke positive. And God spoke to the circumstance. And the circumstance released him into the will of God. Whatever you're going through tonight, today, your thanksgiving is releasing you. From the heart of every circumstance. No circumstance can keep you down anymore. You cannot keep a good man down. It doesn't matter the size of the bottle. The cream will always rise to the top. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will rise again. In the name of Jesus. Give thanks in all things. If Jonah could do it down at the bottom of the sea, in the belly of a fish, if Jesus could do it in, the, in hell itself and be born again, the first born from the dead, you can do it. I said you can do it. You can give thanks in all things because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must learn to contain the harvest. Contain it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Give thanks in all things. Then Paul says, give thanks for all things. How? Give thanks for all things? Even the bad things? Yes. Even the bad things. Why must you give thanks for the bad things? Because when you give thanks, the power of God is going to come down on the bad things and change it to be good things. Hallelujah. All things are going to work together for good to them that love the Lord. I'm going to share two powerful situations with you where Jesus gave thanks when there was a great need. And you're going to learn that that's how you receive from God's restaurant. You're receiving your order with thanksgiving. That's how you're receiving your order. Thanksgiving of faith is your receiver. You're receiving with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Paul says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by, by supplication, 
together with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Lord. And the shalom of God will keep your mind and keep your heart. That's what thanksgiving. You give thanks for everything. And you give thanks in everything. Because thanksgiving catches God's attention. In John chapter 6, we read how God, Jesus, used thanksgiving for multiplication and increase. He has been preaching to thousands of people. In fact, the Bible says it's 5,000 men. So if you count the ladies, there's always more ladies than men. It could have been anything more than 15,000 people. He's preaching the whole day. There's no food. Then he turns to one of the disciples and he says, where can we buy bread? And he knows what he's going to do, but he's testing them. And this one disciple says, we will never have enough money and there's no more bakery here. How are we going to do this thing? You've got to learn how to do things in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. We are getting well up. The die is a root that holds a whole tree up. In Jesus' name. You only find that in Africa. You know what holds everything up in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, then another disciple comes say, we've got just one lad here with five loaves and two fishes. That's all we got. It's so small compared to the need. Whenever God's going to do a material miracle, Always, throughout the Bible, he'll always use, number one, a man of God. You'll never find a material miracle without the involvement of a man of God. Never. That's umteto wangulungulu lo. No munga utandi lo umteto. Uzo sebenza kulaba batandayo alaba bakolo ilendo. You'll do yourself well to understand in the kingdom of God. And you'll have to bow and submit and do it to God's way. You must have a man of God. Number two, you must have a seed. Whatever it is, you must have something to release. Even if it's a rod like Moses, what's that you got in your hand? It's just a rod. But that rod of Moses done so much miracles when it was released to be used by God. That rod opened up the Red Sea. Powerful. What Even though when you look at what you got compared to what you want, you must understand that what you want is locked up in what you got. Always, I'm going to repeat that. Lento oifunayo ila nga pagati kulento onayo. Maunga ichali lento onayo. Ngege uikipe lento oifunayo. That's how the spirit works. Works with what you've got. You need a man of God and you need a seed. Doesn't matter what that seed is. How small or how big, it is according to what you got. It's according to what you got. If you got big and you want big, you got to give big. But if you only got small, you give that which you got. It's a seed. It's something that God will work with. God will never do something in the natural without working with something in the natural. You got to learn how God works. He works with a man of God and he works with something that you'll release for God to work with in the name of Jesus. So Jesus takes the bread 
and we're going to come around the communion. And this is what he does. It says he took the bread and when he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and the disciples started giving to the people. And what he gave thanks for never ran short in the disciples' hands. And the disciples just kept giving it and it was kept filling in their hands. The people kept releasing it. It kept, the cycles just kept going on. Cycles kept going on and on and on. Then Jesus, when they've all eaten, maybe 15,000 people from a boy's lunch, something so small, 15,000 people have well eaten. Then Jesus says, collect what is left over, that nothing be lost. You see, I speak to you today that you're going to enter into a season of increase and multiplication and nothing is going to be lost. Everything that has lost is coming back to you. Multi-generation wealth is coming back to you. What your father lost, what your mother lost is coming back to you. Ukoko, no mama katebe pasopis gane sabalungu, banga holy gase, saibisa yonke le amali, iabuya guena manje, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Glory to God forevermore. Nothing will be lost. And they collected is 12 basketfuls. And that means the apostolic authority of God. Number 12 is apostolic governmental authority. I release that authority on every one of you as I release an anointing of multiplication and increase upon your life that there is a heavenly authority that you will not be a loser and what you release will never be lost uh, and what you gather will also never be lost in the name of Jesus. Will you sit down please for another minute or two? Are you receiving something here? The second great miracle was raising someone from the dead. Lazarus was sick and they sent for Jesus. Jesus, him whom thou lovest is sick, come. And Jesus came after four days. He had died for four days. He was buried and he comes. And this is what he said. I'm the resurrection and the life. If any man believe in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. Say, never die. Never. Say it again. Never die. Never. Third time, never die. never die. I speak over your life that there's no accidents over Christmas. No hijacking over Christmas. No funerals over Christmas. You're going to enjoy your Christmas with your family and with your loved ones. This is the greatest season you've ever known. Give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. You'll be seated. And he says this. Where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? You're going to have to learn to open up to Jesus. There are things that have died in your life. Dreams of greatness, accomplishment. And somehow life may have treated you unkindly. Jesus is going to say to you, where is that now? Take me to that place where it died. Take me to that place. And Jesus wants to resurrect it. Jesus is going to resurrect dread, dead dreams. Childhood dreams, you dreamt of greatness. It's coming back. Hallelujah. Whatever you had a dream is going to come back in your life. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
He's a resurrection and the life. Whatever he touches comes alive. That's that river. Whatever it touches comes alive. In the name of Jesus. They take him to the tomb. And he gives another command. Commands so you can operate this thing. You've got to do it. Two-thirds of God's name is go. God. Go, God. God is a mover. He moves over the face of the waters. He doesn't speak how dark it is. He says, let there be. You're going to have to learn to speak like God. Learn to speak like Jesus. Every you got a Bible, wherever you see it's in the red, you must know Jesus is speaking. That's for you to speak like that. Let there be. Let there be. You speak the solution all the time. You know, if you supply solutions to people's problems, that's business sense. They'll always exchange their money for your solutions. In the name of Jesus, God is releasing ideas, witty inventions, concepts. One God idea will change your life forever. He's going to give you dreams. Dreams to do some things you've never thought you could do. But as you do them, God's going to raise you up. Inanda will become like a garden of Eden in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A fertile garden in the name of Jesus. Move the stone. Lord, he's smelling. I said move the stone. Open it up. Even if it's smelly, open it up to Jesus. Don't be frightened. And then... This is what he does. I love this. He says, Father, I thank you that you hear me. That's short prayers. You see, when you're in faith, you're in thanksgiving, you don't need long prayers that don't get no results. I told you before, if praying would make Africa rich, Africa would have been the richest continent in the world because nobody can pray like Africa. But it shows us nothing wrong in prayer, but there's something more than prayer you must do. You're going to have to learn how to do it by faith. Your prayers are going to have to be prayers of faith. Now know how to command things to happen, to decree things, to say, let it be. Know how to not focus on problems and negativity and focus on solutions. Focus on victories. Focus on that which is positive. Because that which you focus on is going to grow. If you focus on the negative, the negative grows. Anything you focus on expands. And if you focus like a magnifying glass, if you focus on the sun, you can start a fire with a magnifying, a power of focus. It's just heat, warmth from the sun. But as soon as you condense it, it increases in power, focus. So you learn how to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Stop praying for what you don't want. Because anything you focus on is going to grow and come to you. If you focus on what you don't want, what you don't want will be the answer. But if you focus on what you want, what you want will be the answer. You learn the power of focus. Focus means you can take two eyes and put them together on one thing. And stay on that thing till it comes to pass. It's a power of focus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says, Father, I know you always hear me. But I said for these people to believe that you sent me. He says, Father, I thank you that you hear me. Then when he had thanked the Father, it was time to issue a command. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, bound in grave clothes, zoop to the entrance of the grave, the cave. And he stood there alive with grave clothes. And he gives another command. Loose him. 
and let him go. God is giving you a mandate that you're going to resurrect the dead things in the marketplace. You're going to resurrect dead things in your home because you've got a power of resurrection in your life. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell within you. And if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead quickens. Quickens. It's a life quickening spirit. When Mary just greeted Elizabeth, the baby jumped in the womb and got John the Baptist got filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be able to look at things and they're going to get quickened. You're going to be able to shake someone's hand and it will be quickened. Go home today. My son was on drugs and my wife used to pray over the pillow. And he used to come home and sleep. Go back to drugs. But he got quickened. You got to focus on quickening. And today he's a mighty man of God in Canada, an apostle of God. And he's been here too in this church. Hallelujah. Loose him and let him go. It's not just getting people saved. The Great Commission is more than winning souls. It's discipling nations. Go ye therefore in all the world and make disciples of all nations. You see, to lead someone to the Lord and don't teach them great commission. Great commission is more than winning someone to the Lord Jesus. You know, some people, there's so many Christians that are so discouraged because they got born again, but they were never taught how to walk by faith. Never taught how to be delivered from poverty. So when you lead someone to the Lord, I can see your disciples. You all are ordered people. I can see the order in your life. When your father talks, you can actually see it's like your ears go like this. Your mother t t just sings. Hey, the music is even going like that. It's called discipleship. It's more than winning someone to the Lord. It's discipling. And so these two incidences I share. Thanksgiving brings increase and multiplication. Every time you need increase and multiplication, you enter his gates with thanksgiving. The Amplified Bible says, you enter his gates with a thank offering. You come with a thank you offering. So you say thank you and do your chala food. Keep those things together. Thank you, gratitude goes with sowing seed. And then there is a resurrection power that Jesus gives us. That power is within us. What, don't be frightened no more of devils, demons, any, 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 any problem, evil. Don't be frightened anymore. You'll trample on serpents and scorpions. And nothing by any means will harm you. You are filled with the power of God. It's resurrection power. Hallelujah. And you are going to go into the world. And raise up the dead Lazaruses of this world. I commission you today. I deputize you as an apostle of God. With an anointing. That. Let the resurrection anointing come upon you. That from this day forward. You are raising the Lazaruses in the world. You saying come forth. And you are loosing them. And letting them go to serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. Have you received something this morning?